Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Wood, Brass and Glue on Lens GX V6. Uh, today we're going to be continuing on with the uh, uh, foremast backstays. A um, little difference in the videos this time around. Um, of course, we have the, the introduction video, but I've um, used a top down uh, camera to, well, actually, this one's on a side camera uh, to try to uh, give you a better view of how this is being built. Hope this all comes out fine, but we'll see how we go. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, proceeding on with the Scottish made build, uh, we're going to start looking at the backstays. Now, as you can see, this is the top section of the foremast. It fits on just like that. <laughs> Uh, does need to have its box put on, which is coming up. So I'll put that out of the red. So what we need to do is grab our cordage. I can't remember what this is now. It's 0 0.75 or something, I think. Or 0 0.8, sorry. Now, there are multiple ways of doing this. One of the ways you can do it is quite literally drop it over the top like that, drop it down. Size up how much you actually need, uh, which is about that length. Uh, snip that off and just do a couple of half hitches up the top here uh, with your 0 0.25. Uh, and that can be your first two backstays uh, done. To this side, to that side, to this side, to that side. You can do it that way. Uh, you can, again, Similar sort of thing is put it like that. Uh oh, I've moved. Yeah, I bumped the mask before. As you can see, it's loose. So before I actually put any backstays on, I'm going to fix that up. So don't panic too much. But essentially, you can dra drag it over, put all four on, and again, uh, pinch it, pinch all four together using that cable, uh, and do your fancy work or. What we can do is we can take a single amount, just check our sizing, yep, that's about right. Uh, I'll put it in here. Uh, basically, I'm just using um, this to keep the line tight. Uh, and we'll take some of this, where I put my scissors, where's my scissors, there we are. And all we're going to do is just, again, use little half hitches. Remembering this isn't entirely accurate, but it will. So I'll use this to just measure out. I'll just move it a little bit further down. There we go. That'll be about right. And again, it's just a case of half hitches. Nothing spectacular. Now you can actually turn this up. Um, I just find that it's easier just to do it the half hitches. So depending on what scale of model you're using though, uh, if you were a bigger scale, especially for this one, this would be beautiful at um, probably one to 32 scale. I mean, it would make a very big model, but it would also be a, a very nice model. Um, you wouldn't use half hitches up here. You would actually uh, be wrapping these correctly. I said this is just a, to make it look correct. It's not actually being correct. And I think a couple more and we should be good. Yep, uh, I've dropped them. Yes, yeah, big fingers, small rope. Yeah, works wonders. You need to get some clamps, I think. All right. So as you can see, we now have it like that. Again, just a little dab of glue. Doesn't have to be much, and I probably put too much on there, but 
we'll just wait for that to dry a little bit and you'll notice I haven't actually cut it off yet okay well, hopefully I've actually got this all in the picture correctly oh, yeah, it looks like you'll be able to see it without too much of a problem I did a recording once before and I actually had to bump the camera and didn't realize um, until well after I've recorded everything that the camera was actually in the wrong spot Oh, there we go. So what we'll do here now is we'll take that out. Uh, we just want to snip that end. We don't need that bit in there. And the glue should have penetrated that, so we should be able to just do it like that. Take it out of that one. Slide it over the top of the mask. Uh, use a pair of tweezers just to push it down the mask. And there we go. Then we just go for a rough sizing. I normally drop the lines down and I'll normally snip off the line at about here. Um, if I take that out of the road uh, and just carefully turn the model. Uh, it'll normally be about here, even though the block of the um, dead eye is going to be up here. It just gives you um, an extra line that you can utilize. Uh, you can bend it around. Also with my big fingers, it makes it easier for me to hold. Some people don't like to do that, and I'm going to break my model before I even get to the end. And we just snip off. Right, that's fine. Now what we'll do is, okay, I've got eight of these to make, so what I'll do is I'll now do one for the starboard side, and then I'll come back, I'll do one for the port, one for starboard, one port, one starboard, one port, one starboard. All right, ladies and gentlemen, top section of the foremast is now being done. As you can see, all the blocks are in. So you've got three down on the mast topper. There's two above the uh, first hole, and then there's three at the top here. So the outer ones here, here and here, uh, these are going to be uh, boom lifts. Um, not too sure. That would probably be one of the uh, forward sail. Uh, feeds coming through that one. Uh, these ones will be boom assists, so they'll be attached to the boom and come through. So essentially, uh, you'll have a triangular shape with the center pull. Now, for the lower booms down here with the sails, that would be uh, what the other single and double blocks are for. So this single one up the front here would be for the forward sail. Remembering, I don't have. Um, the forward lines on just yet uh, and there would be one that comes from the top here uh, down uh, I think it actually goes to there and that would be the feed for that particular sail this one here uh, would be the lifting block uh, for the boom boom coming up uh, and these two outer ones hopefully I get this in the picture correctly if I actually just push all this back so it's a little easier to see uh, these two would be the main boom uh, lifting blocks so time to uh, grab some glue and um, put the top to the bottom well we're going to try to put the top to the bottom oh that's way too much That's all right. It glues. <laughs> it dries clear, which is a, a good a good thing. And then this piece fits in like that. Um. It's sort of going to hold. I'll come back and have a look at it anyway uh, a little later when the glue actually starts to cure now i'm going to give this 24 hours before i do anything more on the model and that's just to make sure that uh, this glue actually cures correctly uh, and it also gives me a chance to make sure the uh, masks are in fact straight up and down and we've got alignments happening now you'll notice the back stub uh, backstays are coming down 
I've just put a half hitch down here uh, around the uh, bottom section of the dead eye. One, it keeps the lines out of the out of the road, but uh, secondly, it also now starts to give you an idea of uh, where the back stays are going to sit and just sort of what it's going to look like. So the rat lines are actually on the first three, and I think it's every fourth or fifth uh, rat line that goes across to the uh, fourth line. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. That's the uh, four mast back stays. Uh, that's where we're at at the moment. Um, as you can see, I've just got the back stays down. They are half hitched uh, to the dead eyes down the bottom. Uh, that's just so that I can you know, get an idea of just how the model's looking. And it is actually looking really nicely. And also just to uh, keep them from getting uh, tangled up with, the, with themselves. Next episode, we'll be having a look at the four mast uh, gaff. I know I called it a jib, but it's actually gaff. Um, not rigging the sail on it, I'm just making it up and uh, just attaching it to the, uh, loosely attaching it to the uh, four mast, uh, just so that I don't have to put my rather large hands inside all those ropes uh, to attach the thing. Um, there's enough things that are going to go in there that yeah, I'm going to have problems with, but uh, let's take this one out. Um, one thing I did realize um, after I did the video and went, hey, you know, we put all the backstays on and whatnot, and then we put the top of the mask on, and then I looked at the plans and went, hmm, bugger, I still have three lines to run off the main mast uh, down to... Um, the very front whoops uh, and they should have been put on at the same time so yeah looks like i'm gonna do some of it the hard way oh well it is what it is but they will be i will do those at the same time uh as i do the uh dead eyes uh, which is probably one or two episodes to go um i'll get all that done at the same time get it all cleared up and out of the road uh, because then it starts to give us a view of the bow section of the ship or the port section of the ship and just how the ship is actually looking also I can start looking at the tensioning uh, because the main mast uh, once it's in uh, has lines running between the main mast and the fore mast um, and I can't really put those lines in unless I've got the front lines in and just checking the various tensions make sure it's not too tight but then make sure it's not too loose because once you put the sails on and you've got that weight of the sails uh, if the lines are too loose it's just going to say and i have noticed in a couple of the photos of the plans um two of the lines look to me to be a little bit uh loose and you can see it when the sails are on there and the lines are actually um are pulling down so as I said, we'll get to it when we get to it. So if you like the video, of course, thumbs up. Uh, really helps out the channel. Uh, comments as per normal, guys, down below, please. I do like to read the comments. Um, if you're new to the channel or you haven't done so already, you know, press subscribe. It really does help out the channel. Um, it helps out the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to press the bell uh, to get your notifications for new videos. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, fair winds and following seas.